Welcome to City Life. I'm Beverly Thompson. It is often said that perception can be reality. One perception that has plagued Durham for years is that of extensive gang activity and its relationship to crime. Here to tell us the real story is gang reduction strategy manager Jim Stite. He is with the Durham County Criminal Justice Resource Center. Welcome Jim and thank you so much for joining me. Beverly, thank you very much for inviting me to talk about this topic. So, Jim, I understand the last time a gang assessment was done was in 2007. Why was a new assessment needed? Things have changed over time with mm -hmm. the gang situation. Just like any business updates their business plan or the city might update their capital improvements plan, mm -hmm. the steering committee decided that it would be a good idea to update a gang assessment so we would have absolutely the most recent data uh -huh. um, available to look at this uh, problem in our community and be able to address that. Anybody can pick it up and really understand what it's about and to draw their own conclusions. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good because there are a lot of rumors about what uh, people think actually is happening in Durham when it comes to uh, gangs. So tell me, were there any surprises that you found in the 2014 assessment? Well, there were a lot of findings once we gathered all the data. Mm -hmm. One of the most surprising findings was that in looking at all those police incident reports, and there's about 25,000 of those a year, so a total of about 100,000 of them, again, the level of uh, gang involvement by a validated gang member being a victim or a suspect is only about 5%. Wow, that is surprising. Hmm. That, that is surprising, and we feel very good about that, so we think we've made progress in that area. Um, another thing that we're very happy about is that property crime uh, committed by validated gang members, mm -hmm. Ian, uh, is down about 30% mm -hmm. over that uh, same four-year period. We can credit the law enforcement agencies for their good work mm -hmm. in bringing that rate down. We can also credit the community for being more aware, mm -hmm. taking proactive steps to reduce the property crimes. How do you get information that you use for an assessment? Well, for this assessment, we started with the uh, most recent census information. We wanted to look at risk factors in the community that include uh, poverty, mm -hmm. uh, high rates of unemployment, areas with low educational attainment, and match that up with um, the information that we have about gangs. Mm -hmm. So we also visited with the, with the school district, and I'm very pleased to report that Durham Public Schools was a very good partner in this process. Mm -hmm. uh, they formed a team of researchers that helped us identify relevant school data to analyze that data and make sense of it and they were very good partners in helping us with that whole piece because when you talk about the gang membership and uh, youth uh, the schools certainly play a part in that as mm -hmm. do the homes. So you're satisfied that you took a very holistic look at all of the uh, areas that might have some knowledge of gangs and gang activity in gathering this information. We really did. Mm -hmm. With the police department data and the school data and the census data, we also added, uh, we went to the community. Mm -hmm. So the city of Durham does a survey. We added two questions about gang activity in that survey. We did our own informal survey. So we had an idea of what the community believes about gangs where they get their information about gangs. Mm -hmm. And we found that a lot of times uh, the community has a different perception huh. than, what the re than what the reality is with regards to gangs. So uh -huh. that's what we're trying to address in this. Uh, finally, we talked to our service providers. Uh, those would be nonprofit groups that work directly with gang members. And we asked those service providers, what are you seeing? What are the changes you're seeing? Are there any gaps? Mm -hmm. And if there are gaps in services, then how can we address those gaps? Hmm. We also added that information to this piece to make it a, a complete document. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you then, what do you think has changed between 2007 and now to change the numbers so drastically? Well, the 2007 study was done because there was, again, there was a high community concern about mm -hmm. gangs. Mm -hmm. And right after that assessment was done, Durham adopted a gang model, the comprehensive gang model. As part of that, a steering committee was formed. Mm -hmm. It's an active group and all of them are very passionate about uh, working to reduce youth crime, mm -hmm. working to reduce um, gang membership. And Tom Bonfield, the city manager, is the co-chair. Wendell Davis, the county manager, is the other co-chair. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, many community leaders on that steering committee and they do great work. Also after the 2007 assessment, we started what is called Project Build. And that is a program that works directly with gang members. Uh -huh. 
and it's been very effective. Hundreds of youth have been served by Project BUILD. Project BUILD utilizes outreach workers that are familiar with the youth. They meet them in their homes. They visit with them at school. They work them through a lot of different problems. So Project BUILD has the outreach workers, but they also have what's called a multidisciplinary team mm -hmm. that looks at individual cases. So on this team, around the table, we have the police department, you have the school district, you have mental health, you have juvenile justice, all looking at this particular case to come up with a solution for this particular child and the best way to manage your case and get them away from the gangs. And that's been very effective. Why was completing this assessment important? We did want to get a new sense of direction. The 2007 assessment did work very well for us. It had mm -hmm. 45 recommendations, and that got us to the point where we are today, where we uh, got to those reductions that I talked about earlier. Uh -huh. There's very limited state and federal funding available to, to address youth crime and gang involvement. Mm -hmm. So by having this uh, 2014 assessment done, we believe that we're in a much better position to apply for and receive those federal and state funds mm -hmm. that will help us uh, reduce uh, youth crime and gang membership. Okay, so now that this assessment is complete, what's next? We have several recommendations based on the research, and I'll start with law enforcement. Obviously, we want to reduce the level of violent crime. Uh -huh. And mostly in this area, I think we're looking at aggravated assaults with multiple victims and perhaps the use of a weapon. We really want to get the guns off the streets. So that's another recommendation, to remove more guns by whatever means we can from the streets. We really want to make sure that our very young, our 14 to 16 year olds, aren't involved in crime and criminal activity. So it's very important to us to start working um, with youth at a very young age, even in grade school, mm -hmm. to ingrain in them to stay away from gangs. Mm -hmm. The schools really are going to focus on truancy. We all believe that if students are not in school, uh, there's a much greater chance that they'll be in trouble. So the first thing we have to do is accurately quantify that truancy and then find the underlying reasons. What we've found so far, there's some surprising reasons why kids are truant, but we don't have the whole picture yet. Hmm. And of course, we want to increase graduation rates for the Durham schools mm -hmm. and make sure that all the youth of Durham are prepared for um, a productive life. Mm -hmm. So if our viewers want to look at the full assessment, where can they find it? That assessment is easily accessible on the Durham County website. Okay, all right, so just go to the Durham County website. And That's right. All right, sounds good. Well, do you have any closing thoughts you'd like to leave with us about the current state of gang activity in Durham and where we need to go as a community? When we look at uh, youth crime and gang membership, it's not just the law enforcement, it's not just people like me, it's not just service providers. Mm -hmm. It's the entire community that needs to be involved. Mm -hmm. Please read the assessment. It may be different than what you currently believe now. And then find a place to plug yourself in because uh, there is room for anybody and everybody to assist us in this effort. Mm -hmm. And we look forward to working with the community. So if someone is interested in uh, doing something, can they contact you and you can engage them in the right service They can area? certainly contact me and I'll put them in the right direction. Great, great. Jim, thank you so much for joining me. This is very impactful and is um, one more reason I think Durham uh, is one of the leading communities in looking at what is really out there in terms of um, gang activity and facing any challenges that we have as a community. Thank you, Beverly. All right, thank you again. We've come to our break, but please stay with me for the second half of City Life. We're going to take a closer look at what a new accreditation for the Durham Police Department means for solving crimes. We'll be right back. Welcome back to City Life. We've all seen shows like CSI or Bones, but did you know that Durham has its very own CSI? Joining me to talk about this highly specialized unit is Forensic Services Manager Angela Schelf, and she's with the Durham Police Department, of course. Welcome, Angela, and thank you so much for joining me. 
Thank you, Beverly. So, Angela, anybody who watches crime shows probably feel like they already know about forensics, how everything can be done in 60 minutes or less. Tell me exactly what the police department's um, forensic services unit does. We serve under the Investigative Services Bureau mm -hmm. and we're comprised of three separate units. We have a crime lab unit, a crime scene unit, and a property and evidence unit. And each one has a separate function, but we work together to collect and document evidence store it and dispose of it according to state statutes. Uh -huh. Okay, it's a pretty big job I imagine here in Durham. It is. Um, we stay busy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> we love it. You don't get into this type of work I don't think unless you enjoy public service, uh -huh. serving people. Um, you like science, uh, you like the law. Uh -huh. um, it's a combination of all those things. So is it as easy as it looks on TV? No. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen some of the shows. Honestly, uh -huh. I don't watch all of the, the CSIs. They are based in truth, but they dramatize it, of course, for TV and ratings and so forth. Mm -hmm. But um, there are some reality shows like Forensic Files that talk about true crime. We enjoy watching those types of cases because you get ideas on, on how you might be able to process a piece of evidence or uh -huh. a crime scene in the future. Mm -hmm. So I understand you just received uh, accreditation and what does that mean and why is it important? We're very proud of the accreditation we've achieved. The International Organization for Standardization comes out with specific standards for sciences and so forth and we are accredited under 17020 which is for inspection bodies. Forensic Quality Services is the organization that accredited us. Basically what this means is that that we can do our work and even when they're not there looking over our shoulder and inspecting what we're doing, mm -hmm. that we're providing the best work product that we can, mm -hmm. that we're following all of those policies and procedures. We have internal checks and balances, so it doesn't mean that everything that comes out of there is perfect, mm -hmm. but there's a lot better chance we're going to catch an error uh, in-house before it's published to an investigator, before it's published to the court, mm -hmm. we can find where we might need to improve on something, correct it so it won't happen again. Mm -hmm. It's also allowing us to abide by uh, North Carolina state statute, mm -hmm. the North Carolina Forensic Sciences Act. The accreditation for certain types of forensic analysis, um, when you do a comparison analysis, you have to be accredited in order to produce that evidence in court now. Uh -huh. uh, well, actually, it takes effect July 1st of next year, so other agencies could become accredited. We're very proud of the accreditation. It, it was uh, over a year of preparation uh -huh. of updating our policies and procedures, and we're just very confident that the quality of the work that we're producing now um, is better than it's ever been before. That's great to hear. How many employees are in the unit and what different types of job functions do they have and how does that work to help the investigation process? Sure, we have 32 designated full-time positions uh -huh. uh, in our division. In the crime scene unit, we have crime scene investigators and crime scene specialists. Mm -hmm. Now the crime scene investigators are fairly typical of what people know as a CSI. Mm -hmm. uh, we are all non-sworn in our division, which is something different. Not all agencies have non-sworn mm -hmm. forensic employees, but I'm seeing a trend of that happening. But the crime scene investigators, they respond to any and all crime scenes in Durham from a property crime all the way up to an assault or a person crime. Mm -hmm. They respond to the scene once the officers have established a crime scene, they'll request us out and the crime scene investigator documents the crime scene using photography, video, sketching. They collect the evidence that's on scene. They may actually process some of the evidence on scene looking for fingerprints or shoe prints or other types of evidence. They collect it, they bring it back to the laboratory. The crime scene investigators also process evidence in the lab for fingerprints. Mm -hmm. um, so if it's something that they can't do on scene or we can do it better in the crime lab, then they'll bring it back to the crime lab and try to get that evidence. Our crime scene specialists are senior crime scene investigators that have at least three years of full-time experience mm. and they supervise the crime scene investigators. Okay. So we have one crime scene specialist on each squad of uh, crime scene investigators There's a specialist. And then we have a forensic supervisor who supervises the crime scene unit. They respond to major scenes. Um, they do a lot of the administrative work. Mm -hmm. now, what would be a major scene? 
A major scene would be, uh, for instance, a homicide okay. or a sexual assault case where we have to use different methods of collecting evidence. There's different evidence than you might find at a property crime scene. Mm -hmm. um, guns or um, body fluids, different things like that that, that you may not find at a, a property crime scene. So we consider that a major scene. We have um, different rules about you know how soon you need to get the, the casework finished depending on the type of, of crime it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we have our crime lab unit and in our crime lab, we provide uh, firearm and tool mark analysis, digital forensic analysis, and latent print analysis. Mm -hmm. Now, the firearm and tool mark might sound fairly self-explanatory. We, we look at firearms and ammunition, and as well as tool marks that are left at crime scenes. We can oh. actually compare uh, if a pry tool was used, say, to break into a home, and we find a tool uh, on a suspect or nearby, we can possibly ascertain whether or not that tool was used in that break-in uh -huh. by taking a cast of the tool mark that's on the door frame or wherever the break-in occurred. In our digital forensics lab, we analyze cell phones, computers, and anything that stores data. Mm -hmm. And as you can imagine, um, there's not many crimes nowadays where there's not a cell phone involved, so that section stays extremely busy. And then our latent print analysis look at fingerprints and palm prints that mm -hmm. are collected from crime scenes or collected from evidence. And they compare those to sometimes known persons, uh -huh. if an, uh, an investigator may give us a name of someone, or we can search databases that we have access to that are uh, statewide, local, as well as national. Has this helped us or Durham to be able to solve crimes any quicker or more accurately? or? anything like that? Yes, well we received our accreditation last October so mm -hmm. it's still fairly new and we're still hiring all of the positions that we requested as a part of accreditation. Uh, with accreditation every report, every analysis has to be verified by mm -hmm. a second qualified examiner. Therefore we had to hire a second examiner in each of our crime lab. We do anticipate that having the uh, extra personnel and having the accreditation and the standards that we're following is going to improve the turnaround time mm -hmm. for the analysis. We hope that that will in turn affect positively the clearance rates mm -hmm. um, for the cases that uh, happen in Durham. And we also assist other agencies. There are some surrounding agencies that will submit evidence to us mm -hmm. because they know our turnaround time is faster than the state lab awesome. right now. Awesome. So I have to ask you, and I should ask you this before, what did we do before your unit was started? Well, uh, up until 2006, we were comprised of just crime scene uh, technicians, we uh -huh. were called then, and a supervisor. Uh -huh. We didn't have uh, a crime lab unit, so everything we had was uh, sent to the state lab in Raleigh. Us and a hundred other, well, maybe and not all the hundred, other, but yeah, a lot of other Most counties, of the so. other agencies. Yeah. <laughs> so being more self-sufficient is actually helping the state as well. Uh -huh. We have a good relationship with them, and we still send DNA analysis, drug analysis, we don't do those things in Durham, so we still have to send items to the state lab. For Durham citizens and for the law enforcement and court system here, having our own analysis, our own crime lab, uh, is definitely a help mm -hmm. in, in getting things turned around. Things are moving faster in court uh -huh. now, so this only helps mm -hmm. facilitate that. So why is it so important that the public know that we have a unit like this? Well, I think it's uh, important for them to understand that our mission is to provide the best quality forensic services um, that we can. We want to be the most professional division. We want, to, we want people to know that evidence is unbiased and we're there to find the evidence and we don't know the details of the case mm -hmm. that's going on. We're just there to find the evidence and present that fact to the investigators. Mm -hmm. And then they're gonna use that in the investigation to make the determination on arrest. But it's also exonerating the innocent. Mm -hmm. You know, if we find a fingerprint that matches uh, one person, then we know it's not this other person. And, and that way, the investigator can, can focus on what they need to mm -hmm. and not f go down a path that's gonna waste the, t you know, waste the time of, of them, waste the time of the citizen's family that's uh -huh. involved. Uh -huh. Any closing thoughts you'd like to leave for our viewers? 
Uh, just that we've been very blessed, we feel, by the city council and by the police department in supporting us in this endeavor to uh -huh. be accredited, uh, to hire the additional personnel. Like I said, we have a great group. Uh -huh. We really do have one of the best crime labs and forensic divisions in the state. So let me ask you, I would imagine there are a lot of kids who watch these shows and think that this might be a career choice for them. Mm -hmm. How do you get into this area? I mean, how would a student, I mean, they'd have to be, of course, a good science student, I would imagine, <laughs> but after that? That's a really good question, mm -hmm. and I probably get asked that about three times a week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do actually do a lot of community events. Uh -huh. uh, we send our crime scene investigators out to schools and community events, and we do get to talk a lot to the kids and to the students. And we tell them to keep their integrity, you know, that they need to stay in school, they need to stay studying get their degree. Mm -hmm. um, the degrees can vary. Uh, criminal justice or a science degree, mm -hmm. um, even a psychology degree, because oh. you do have to, to be able to think um, kind of like the criminals that are out there uh -huh. um, in order to, to help you do the job uh, the best way possible. And if they stay in school, get their degree. And then also I tell people to try and do an internship or volunteer with a forensic unit, with the medical examiner's office, with um, a local police department. Because um, mm -hmm. you don't really know, I don't think, if you can do this kind of job until you're in and around it. Uh -huh. You know, the smells, the things that you don't see or on don't TV. get on TV. Uh -huh. <laughs> you want to you wanna try to encounter those before you determine if that's going to be your career path. Uh -huh. but. We uh, welcome if people want to take tours of our laboratory. How do um, they get in touch with you? They can call me at my office number at 560-4432, mm -hmm. extension 29266, and we'll be happy to set something up. Great. Angela, thank you so much mm -hmm. for joining me today. Very interesting work you do and very important work that you do. Thank you very much. All right. Well, that does it for City Life. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and watch us on Durham Television Network and on YouTube. I'm Beverly Thompson. Thank you for joining me to learn more about City Life in Durham.